Hey church family, my name is Annie Neufeld. I'm the pastor of small groups here at Lake Avenue Church and this is your weekly small groups video. This past weekend we continued in our series called Homecoming in which we're looking at our guiding documents and we had the privilege of hearing from Dr. Kara Powell who's been a longtime member here, a pastor and a director here at one point. Uh, she's on the faculty at Fuller Theological Seminary. She's an author. She's the director of the Fuller Youth Institute. It was a joy to be led by her this weekend. Uh, Dr. Powell took us through Micah 6 verses 6 through 8 as we examined our core value of being a reconciling community that pursuing God's justice, mercy, and compassion, we are involved in his ministries of reconciliation. In Micah 6, we, we see God calling his people to a new way of life. They have rejected his ways. They have rebelled against him. They have broken his covenant. And they have tried, they are trying to make things right with God, to regain God's favor by giving him an escalating series of sacrifices and offerings from calves to rams to, all, to rivers of olive oil and finally their firstborn child. But God says, this is not enough. This is not the way to healing and reconciliation. Instead, we read in verse 8, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. This is what it means for Israel to follow their God. Dr. Powell gave us three commands that we see in this verse. First, we are called to act justly. In the Bible, justice is conceived, is conceived as restoring what's broken, restoring God's kingdom, shalom, restoring the world to the way it was always intended to be, uh, righting the wrongs of the world. We see this idea of justice throughout the scriptures. It's something that the Bible talks about over and over and over again. And justice is consistently concerned with those living at the margins, the most vulnerable, the ones with the least power, so instead of offering God this enormous quantity of sacrifices, the people of God are told to act justly. Second, they're told to love mercy, to allow this, this value um, to not just be things that they do or things that they say, but, but let it actually sink into their heart, um, to give God access to their insides and not just live um, based on actions on the outside. And last, we're called to walk humbly with God, to give our whole lives over to the Lord. Now, this is a new way of being that God calls the people of Israel to. And I think sometimes, even in our day, it can seem like a utopia. Um, it can seem too idealistic, especially in our day and age when we feel so divided. And yet, I think um, that it feels unrealistic in part because our imagination for what God can do is too small. So this week, I want to invite us to exercise those imagination muscles. Take a moment to imagine what it would look like if we were really to live out Micah 6, 8, if we were really to live out this core value of pursuing God's justice, his mercy, his compassion, being involved in these ministries of reconciliation. What difference would it make in our church, our city, our nation, our world? if we truly lived this out? What difference would it make in our kids' schools? What difference would it make for the person living on a tent on the street, in the faith of our young people? I wanna invite you to imagine. Walter Brueggemann says that the prophet engages in what he calls futuring fantasy. The prophet does not ask if the vision can be implemented. For questions of implementation are of no consequence until the vision can be imagined. The imagination must come before the implementation. He goes on to say that imagination of this sort and what he calls future, futuring fantasy are dangerous because it threatens the status quo. So this week, let's be a little dangerous. Let's be a little subversive and let's imagine how our world would change from our immediate family to the ends of the earth. How would our, would our world change if we act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God? Well, this week, church family, we pray that you would experience the God of rescue and redemption. We pray that you would experience the God who acts justly, who loves mercy 
and who sent his one and only son to walk humbly on this earth so that we might be free. Go in peace.